we are doing a practice problem on Professor Kim. We're going to do a diff challenging re equivalent resistance problem. It is in the Irwin 12th edition book. It is E2.24, so let's get to it. So here's our problem. First, let's read it. Find the equivalent resistance RT in the circuit. And when we look at our circuit, we see here's our RT, so it's measured from this top node to this bottom node here. And we have some, this resistor is in series with this big triangle, double triangle diamond of resistors. So from looking at this, it's not easy. There's no direct series or parallel connection. Like we can't add these easily. So what we're gonna have to do is have a transform some of this circuit. Specifically, we need to transform one of these delta circuits. With delta, you can see these little triangles here, top and bottom. We need to transform one of them into a Y circuit. Before we do that, we need to write down what we're trying to find. We're trying to find RT. First, let's redraw this circuit with the transforming one of the delta connections. We could choose to do the top or the bottom one um, because this circuit is going to come out nicely because of the numbers. We're going to stick with the top one. We noticed that these are all uh, factors of or multiples of nine. So we're gonna transform the top one and we should get some nice numbers out of that. Technically, you could do either one and you'll get the same answer. So let's redraw this here. Oops, this is gonna come down. Okay, so let's rewrite this, six kilo ohms. And then this is the transformation we haven't done this yet, so I'm going to call this RA, RB, and RC because we have to determine what these values are based on these values in the delta connection. But then we have following that from here, we would have the 3 kilo ohm, so 3 kilo ohm resistor, and from here we would have the 18 kilo ohm resistor, so 18 kilo ohm, and at the bottom we would have our two kilo ohm resistor. And so from this configuration, you can see we have some value, like these two are, top two are in series now, and we have some other series combinations. So this is gonna be something we can actually calculate more easily. But first we have to calculate our A, our B, and our C. So let's start with our A. When we do the transformation, we will look at, so RA is this top uh, point. So we multiply the two resistors that are touching that same point. So in this case, it's gonna be 54. 54 is then multiplied by 36. And I'm gonna drop all the kilo ohm because we're on completely all in resistances, so we'll add them back at the end. All right, and then we divide by, we add each leg of the triangle together. So we're going to get 54 plus uh, 36 plus 18. All right, so that's going to be the equivalent resistance. Let's figure this out. You can, of course, use a calculator, but we can even do this with just mental math. So we notice that each of these is a multiple of 9. So we have 9 times 6, and then 9 times 4, and then 9 times 2. On the denominator and we can also write that in we can factor the top one as well so 9 times 6 and then times the 36 which is 9 times 4 so on this bottom one we can you know collect the nines together and we will get 9 times total of 12 right so we could factor that 12 into 4 and 3 so we'll just go with that notation for now and then on the top we would have a 9 a 9, a 4, and I'll even factor the 6 into 2 and 3. When we write it like this, we see that we get some nice cancellations here. And so what we're left with is 18, and remember we're in kilo ohms. So the value of RA is 18 kilo ohms, and we can write that here. 18 kilo ohms. Beautiful. Now let's do the same thing for RB. So we'll start from the base equation. This RB is this node 
right here. So we have to find that same node here. We see that those are connected to the 36 and the 18. So we're going to multiply those two together. 36 times 18. And then we're, it's going to be the same denominator again. We've already factored it all out, so we might as well just keep that same factorization there. So it's 9 times 4 times 3. And we can factor the numerator again here. So we're going to get uh, 9 times 4 and then 9 times 2. We're dividing by 9 times 4 times 3. So we get some nice simplifications out here. This can go into 3. And so what we get out here is just going to be 6, and our unit is kiloohms. So our B is going to be just 6 kiloohms. All right, last one, our C. We do the same thing again. So we look at this. This node here is the equivalent to this one over here. In the delta configuration, it's connected to the 54 and 18. So those are going to be multiplied together. So 54 times 18 divided by the sum of the 3 uh, together, which we've already calculated. So I'm just going to write the factored version here. And we can factor these again. So 9 times 6 times uh, 9 times 2. So 9, 4, and 3. So we can get rid of some things in here. Actually, this is all going to be 12. So we'll end up with just 9 kiloohms here. All right, so write that up here. All right, now we have these values for each of them. And now it's a equivalent circuit problem. And we can just multiply or do these branch by branch. So I'm going to start with combining the top two resistors, resistors which are in series. And I do recommend like, redrawing these. So I'm going to redraw them down here. Let's see if I can fit it in here. So we're going to redraw this one. And I'll just put this resistor here. This now is 6 plus 18, which is 24. All right, and then we have these two parallel branches. We're going to keep them as parallel branches, but we're going to add the two uh, resistors that are in series here. So this parallel branch is going to be one equivalent resistance, and then the other side is going to be another equivalent resistance. Let's look at those values first. We have two values in series, so 9 and 3, so that's just going to be 12 kilo-ohms. And then we add the 18 and the 6, and that's going to be 24. And then we have our 2 kilo-ohm coming back here. Just keep that as is for now. All right, now we have two resistors in parallel. We need to find the parallel equivalent resistance of that. So if you remember our equation for that, so R, I'm going to say parallel. So we're going to multiply those two values together on the top. So it's going to be 12 times 24. And then we add them together in the denominator. So 12 plus 24. Um, we can see this is going to be 36 on the bottom. We can factor that right away. So let's just do 6 times 6. And then we have a 2 times 6 factor of the 12. And then uh, 4 times 6. Oops, I wrote a 2 here, didn't I? 6. Sorry about that. And then we're going to cancel, 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 cancel. And so what we'll be left with is 8. And then put our units back, kilo ohms. So that is this parallel resistance. So now we can redraw this. I'm going to kind of go down here, I guess. We have now 24 kilo ohms in series with 8 kilo ohms in series with 2 kilo ohms. And it goes over there. So those are the, our two terminals. Now it's just series, so we just add them all together. So our full equivalent resistance will just be 24 plus uh, 8 plus 2, and that is going to be equal to 34 kilo ohms. So let's write that as our answer.
So our final answer, the final equivalent resistance for this circuit was 34 kilo ohms. That's our final answer. And it's a little bit complicated. We had to do a transformation of the top one. But after we did that, we're able to put them into different branches of series and parallel resistances. And you just take each branch one at a time. Another thing, especially when you're learning, I recommend writing out like I did here, each of the circuit as you go, redrawing the circuit because it will help reduce your uh, little mistakes that you might make. So I do suggest kind of drawing the progression of your circuit as it changes. But we can apply basic Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's uh, voltage law, and get to the equivalent resistance of a resistor network.